debts amounting to more than one trillion dollars. Ringgit. You know, before we never talk about billions even. We talk about millions. But now we talk about trillions. Twelve zeros. That is what is meant by trillion. And the problem is, how do we repay this loan? And Najib took the easy way out. He sold land to raise money to pay debts. But we can't keep on selling land in order to raise money, or we will soon find that there is no Malaysia, except some foreign country. <laughs> so now we are busy trying to do change things in order that we will be able to resolve the financial problem without hurting the country. I am lucky because uh, for these uh, studies, in-depth studies of the uh, wrong things done by the previous government, I was able to rely on a group of people whom we call the eminent, eminent persons group. These people have had some experience in administration, in uh, finan financial uh, dealings, etc. And they have now discovered the extent of the problem faced by the government. It is far more than what we anticipated. So it will take us a long time in order to resolve the problem. Uh, lots of people are waiting, when are we going to arrest Datu Sri Naji? <laughs> well, it's not so easy. We need to collect the kind of evidence that will stand up in court. If we fail to do that, he might win. Just, mean, just think what would happen if he wins a court uh, a, a trial and he is found not guilty. Then all the promises that we made, all the bad things that we said about him would be questioned by the people who voted us in. But uh, we hope that we'll be able to gather enough evidence to charge him in court and hopefully he will be found guilty, hopefully. We don't know because we have, unlike the previous government, we don't have any influence over the court. We have decided that we will be truly democratic in the sense that the people's choice must be respected we must understand democratic rules and procedures. We must not take power into our hands. Instead, power in the country must be divided between the legislative, legislative the executive, and the judiciary. So this is a kind of check and balance to make sure that none of us do the wrong things. So it will be not, it will not be easy for us to ride roughshod over the country and just throw people into jail. So I think that would be a relief to Dr. Sri Najib. But as you know, he's not allowed to leave the country. Lots of people nowadays disappear. <laughs> Even Jama Tongkol has disappeared. <laughs> so we don't know who else will disappear. But we hope that by, before they can disappear, we can, uh, well, take the law, go through the laws of the country and punish the, the people guilty of breaking the law. But to come back to the restructuring and rehabilitating the country is not going to be easy. In the first place, this one trillion over dollars uh, loan will have to drag, will drag us down and we will have not enough money to run the government as we did in the past. So some people may suffer because they want us to be straight and not be um, 
involved in uh, corruption, the government would have no money to pay for things like scholarships and things like that. So there is a price for everyone to pay. Najib used to steal money, sorry. <laughs> well, he used stolen money to boost everything. Everybody gets paid by the government. Uh, fishermen who do not fish get paid salaries. Uh, Ketua Kampung get paid. Ketua Jawatan uh, Kuasa, Kemajuan Kampung gets paid. Everybody gets paid. But we can't sustain them. Even the brim thing cannot be sustained by us. But we will create another fund, another gift for the people, but confined only to those people who deserve to have help. People who are earning, already are able to have a fair, fairly good life, will not get any uh, Pakatan Harapan's version of brim. We don't call it Brim, of course. <laughs> we have to call it by some other name. We don't want to inherit their bad habits. <laughs> so a lot of people will not be able to perform the Hajj this time because the government will not be paying for their Hajj with stolen money. If you want us to, we can steal money and pay, but we don't believe in stealing money. So that is the situation in the country today. However, people are very, very supportive. Somebody started, decided that they should donate some money to the government. It's not our, on our urging. They, on their own, decided they should help the government by donating money to the government. And within one day, we collected $7 million. Now. voluntarily coming from the public, without any urging by us. By now, we have more than 40 million. Of course, 40 million is not very big. When you have to pay debts of one trillion, 40 billion is nothing. But the gesture is much appreciated. It shows how much the people are concerned about the country. They want the country to be well off, to be able to pay his debts to the extent that they can help, they volunteer to help. I'm very grateful to them. We are all grateful to them. And even in schools, little boys collect money to give to the government because they know the government is uh, short, short of funds. But uh, we can see some ways for us to overcome the huge losses uh, so due to the last uh, government. We are still finding more. Every time we examine anything, we find uh, that money has been shunted away or stolen or uh, just, uh, well, just uh, hidden away somewhere. Recently, we decided, decided there is to be a multi-purpose, multi, uh, a pipeline for all kinds of material. The pipeline uh, would cost some billions of dollars. And then we discovered that the agreement made by the company with the government is that the government will pay at a specified date, not according to the progress of the work done. So now we have paid 80% for the pipeline, which is only 13% completed. How we are going to get the rest of the money, I don't know. But these are the kinds of things that we find in the government. Everywhere we look, we find wrong things being done. Money being stolen, hidden. Money being used for the wrong things. So we have a tough time to deal with all these problems and rehabilitate the country. But God willing, we will do it. I hope to be able to do something in the first 100 days as we promised. We will get rid of GST, for example. 
We will get rid of fake news laws. We will get rid of oppressive laws where people can be arrested with a trial and then if they die, no inquest is to be carried out. It's a license for murder. That is what the government has, uh, the law says. But we will do away with such laws. In the business front, on the business front, we will be very friendly towards business people. At one time, we used to have Malaysia Incorporated, where the government and the private sector works as one body, trying to improve the performance of that body being the nation. Now we want to go back to working with the private sector and treating them as friends, not as enemies. We want to do things quickly. We want to approve things quickly. We don't want any hanky-panky. There will be, uh, well, uh, tenders for everything. For example, if there is anything, any contract being given out by the government, the person getting the contract must carry out the contract. If he sells the contract to somebody else, that contract will be nullified. So you cannot sell APs and IPPs and the like to other people when you get it free from the government. So there are many things that we will do to uh, eradicate corruption. I'm aware that it's not easy to eradicate corruption, but we will do our best. Certainly we will not ever be like the last regime where corruption is carried out right at the top. And below there will be lots of people who say that since the boss is corrupt, we also should be corrupt, corrupted and we should uh, get less than what the bo bo boss gets. But that is not going to be so this time. Uh, somebody tells me that a fish rots from the heat of the, from the fish heat. So we are not going to have rotten fish at the heat. We are going to be very strict about this, which means that some people will suffer. But we have to pay the price for eradicating corruption in our country. There is a new uh, body being set up to look into corruption and already the first meeting was held in which the steps to be taken to eradicate corruption has been enunciated and the people concerned have been identified who will make sure that corruption would be eliminated. And if corruption is eliminated, we will save about 30% of our money. And with that 30%, we can do lots of other things. So these are some of the things that we have done, and I understand that you would like to ask questions. Don't be too harsh on me. <laughs> you can ask any question you like. Okay. Yes? Mike, Mike. I don't mind now. Mike, Ada. Yes, okay.